Hi guys, Caitlin here. Um, I'm kind of talking a little bit quiet just because one of the boys is napping. Um, I want to share that so much of the battle is in our mind, right? Battles that we might experience. The internal battle, the internal struggle. Um, and this is exactly one of the tactics of the enemy, right? Because if he can put these thoughts in our mind and we believe them, then we don't know the truth because what does the truth do? The truth sets us free. So if the devil can keep us in bondage, even mentally over a certain area of truth, um, then we are, we are walking spiritually blind in that particular area. Once we receive revelation, once that veil is lifted, once the truth is spoken to us and we receive it, and then we don't start right away in self-condemnation, but we receive the truth and the truth sets us free, then we can start to walk in freedom in that particular area. So, oh, sorry. thought I heard my son. Revelation. There's so much revelation, right? And wisdom. Um, walking in the wisdom of the Holy Spirit leads to life, right? But when we are blind, we are walking in darkness. Darkness can lead to, right? My people shall perish for lack of knowledge. If we do not receive knowledge, godly knowledge, right? I just read this morning, um, actually it was really amazing, in Proverbs 8 and Proverbs 9, those two chapters, it talks all about wisdom and refers again to wisdom as she. Now, I said this the other day, and then someone started saying, oh, yeah, the Holy Spirit is a she. No, the scripture is very clear. The Holy Spirit is he, um, and referred to in he as he. However, the spirit of wisdom is referred to as female. Um, please, there's it's all throughout scripture. Proverbs, entire chapter 8, entire chapter 9, um, places in the New Testament, um, wisdom is referred to as she. So, but don't get that confused with the Holy Spirit, who is he. The Holy Spirit is male, okay? Um, I think it's clear, it's really important to differentiate between those. Because remember, this guy, there's like the seven spirits of God. So, that's that's a whole other teaching. Um, however, I think it's important for us to just receive this knowledge and understand it. So, I want to read out of Philippians 4, 8 to 23. Like I started out by saying that a lot of the battle is in our mind. So what should we do? We should meditate on the things of God. Meditate on the things that are good. Meditate on these things. Because when we meditate on the truth, then the truth will set us free. Right? If we spend our time thinking about confusing things, this just creates a snowball effect. We don't want to go into the snowball of us trying to apply our own answers that we just wonder to a question. No, we need to apply God's word to our questions. And remember that the devil brings confusion. Our God is not a God of confusion. Amen? So Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. So when we meditate on the word, when we think of the goodness of God, then the God of peace will be with us. However, if we are thinking about confusing things, we're essentially rejecting God's word because we're not immediately going to the word to answer the question. If we just start thinking on these things without going to the word or without being in prayer, our own carnal thoughts or thoughts that the enemy will try to plant those seeds, those will start answering our questions. And that's, that's where the confusion can come in. And what comes with confusion? Not peace, right? Sadness, doubt. Depression, anxiety, unworthiness, self-condemnation. That is why if a confusing thought comes in, go to the Word. Ask the Holy Spirit for clarity. Meditate on these things. Do not start to apply your carnal answers to questions. No. 
go to the Word and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you because He is ultimately our teacher. Okay? All right, guys, I pray this blesses you. I know it's short, but I just really wanted to bless you with this. Um, I had a, a prayer call this morning, and that was amazing. And we're actually going to meet again on Thursday, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, I have another one scheduled for the week after Christmas, and I'm really excited about that. But God wants to set his children free. So um, if you want to find someone who will pray with you, who believes in the impossible, right? Who believes in the word of God. Because guys, what does the word of God say? That all things are possible with Christ. That nothing is impossible. No, nothing is impossible with Christ. Things that are impossible for man are possible with Christ. Amen? This means years of bondage can be broken off. Years of torment. Years of feeling unworthy. Years of a broken heart. Years of depression, anxiety, self-condemnation. Whatever the, that is, that can be removed by the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit, right? The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing of God breaks the yoke of bondage. Hallelujah. All right, guys, I love you. God bless. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.